From the Western Mass News Studios in Springfield, this is Western Mass News, getting answers with Dave Matson. Thanks for joining me for this week's edition of Western Mass News, getting answers every week. As you know by now, I'm joined by political and business leaders and other newsmakers to talk about the issues that impact you. And this week, we're getting answers from Agawa Mayor William Sapelli. Just a month ago, he was reelected to a third two-year term. He was first elected mayor in 2017 after retiring from a 40-year career in the Agawa Public Schools, culminating as superintendent of schools. Time permitting, we're going to focus on how Agawam's coming out of the COVID-19 pandemic issues facing the city, including traffic and schools, and what he's hoping to accomplish in his third term. Mayor Spelly, good to see you. Nice to see you, Dave. Thanks for taking the time to be here. Oh, you're welcome. You know, I, did, I was reading this yesterday. Nearly a fifth of the mayors in Massachusetts opted not to seek re-election in 2021 over the last year. Uh, they found themselves weighing matters of life or death, local businesses shutting down or closing altogether. And according to a New York Times article that was out this spring, many mayors are explaining their decisions to leave office with the same reason, that the pandemic response uh, demanded so much they couldn't both campaign and perform their duties, or that the work had become so stressful that their families had recommended that they step away. Did you ever consider not running for a third term? Um, yes, I think everybody did. Uh, when they were in the middle of it, they said, geez, what am I doing here? Especially as you pointed out earlier that I had 40 years on the school side and retired yeah. from that. So this is like a second career for me. I would have never thought I would have been a politician, if you will. So I consider myself an elected official, not a politician. But yes, we all did. But I think in, in many cases, we felt um, a lot of gratification in the fact that we helped the community get through this pandemic. Not that we're out of the woods yet, but it's a lot easier than it was a year and a half ago. And so many things went on with it, as you pointed out, whether it was just your community, we're trying to keep businesses open and operating, and especially with the schools, yeah. you know, trying to keep kids, get kids in front of teachers. Um, it was uh, it was a pretty stressful uh, situation. And of course, everybody can second guess your decisions as they always do. And in these cases, this, uh, there's an old expression like, this isn't my first rodeo. Mm -hmm. Well, for all of us, it was our first rodeo. We never had gone through a pandemic like this before. So you were kind of making up rules as you were going along and trying to make the best decisions based on the data and the information you had. Sure, and I think a lot of it too, uh, you know, see many leaders across the state, it was like, you had to almost be like a cheerleader too, in spite of all this information that you were getting in day after day after day, especially during the height of it, to present a, a good face to the public and say, listen, we're gonna get out of this. Oh, without a doubt. I mean, you know, you had people that, you know, when are my kids gonna get back in school? You know, I gotta get back to work. I've gotta stay home and watch my kids. Or the businesses that, uh, you know, the restaurants and bars, for instance, uh, that were closed down, first of all, completely, and then, okay, you can open, but only 50%. Well, 50% basically doesn't even cover your costs. Right. You know, so what we did in Agawa, I mean, many communities did, but we were one of the first, I think. We uh, allowed them to use outdoor dining, and we, uh, between the uh, city council, was excellent during all this, working hand-in-hand -hand with me. We were promoting outdoor dining. We uh, permitted it, expedited the permitting so they could get it open and up and running. So if you had... Uh, capability capacity of 100 people inside your facility and now you were cut to 50 people by having the outdoor dining with the tents you picked up that other 50 and sure. made yourself whole and that got a lot of these restaurants through the pandemic so we didn't lose a lot of businesses through it so we were fortunate so as, as we've headed to the end of the year now and the beginning of uh, next year we're looking at two years here what kind of shape is the city of agawam in now as far as dealing with COVID-19 and after and the aftermath? We are in real good shape. Our health department, our fire department, our police department did one heck of a job keeping things running. We had Bethany Assembly of God, one of our big uh, churches in our community, offer their facility free of charge to do a lot of the uh, testing and the vaccinations. We were a vaccination center for the first responders way back in the beginning of the pandemic for the surrounding communities, for Westfield, Agawam, West Springfield, East La Meadow, La Meadow. They came over there and received their vaccines when they were the first group that was offered the vaccines. So uh, we're coming out of it fairly well. Um, our businesses were in good shape. As I said, we didn't lose a lot of business. That's good. Um, but it was, it was a challenge. But right now, we're focused more on the educational piece of it. We still are masked in school. We're hoping to get rid of that soon. But now that the vaccines are out for, for the younger generation, the younger students, um, hopefully, you know, that'll pick up and, and encourage those that uh, feel comfortable getting it to get it. 
and uh, hopefully uh, we'll be out of the masking uh, by the end of the year as well. But I, I don't see that happening this year. I see the mask probably going through June. Yeah, talking you, with, especially with this new strain of it. Um, it. Now, as far as the mask mandate in the city as a whole, is that that's still in existence? No, we do no, not so. have a man, ma mask mandate in Agawam. We do for the schools only. Yeah. Um, obviously, but that's a DESE mandate, not a, a community, not a municipal mandate. So uh, right now we haven't had a mask mandate uh, in Agawam. You know, the other part of that, too, you dealt, you've dealt with kids for years through the school system is we, I think we found during this that our kids are a lot more durable than we are in many ways when it comes to dealing with that and wearing masks. You're, you're absolutely right. Uh, the parents had more of a concern with it than, than the students did. But what I felt bad for is for the uh, juniors and seniors in the last two years, you know, you only have one chance to be a senior. And with some of the extracurricular activities, whether it was robotics or band or sports, um, they missed that opportunity sure. in several, several cases where they had to shut it right down. And that's unfortunate, um, but uh, they're going to be stronger for it and more resilient. As far as uh, the vaccination rate in the city, you, you pleased with it? Uh, obviously, everything could be better. I am. I am. The majority of people are getting it, and those that aren't getting it have a good reason for it, whether it's uh, they have a, a medical condition or a religious exemption or sure. something of that nature. For the most part, people are being reasonable about it. You comfortable with, if, in case there was a surge in COVID-19 cases over the winter, that uh, Agawam's in a, in a good position to deal with it? I think we are. I think we learned a lot in the last two years. Our, our health department really merged with uh, the police department, fire department. Uh, we learned an awful lot uh, moving forward. Uh, so I, I feel very comfortable. The schools did an amazing job yeah. with getting our students. We were one of the first communities that had our kids back in front of teachers. Um, so we were back May 1st. And a lot of schools didn't get back at all last year. Yeah. Now, aside from COVID-19, as mayor, what, what, what has been your biggest challenge? My biggest challenge has been um, infrastructure. Mm -hmm. It's been streets and sidewalks. And uh, something that, that came out, uh, I'm going to say, in July of 18 was with the uh, new federal EPA uh, Clean Water Act. All the different regulations that were put on stormwater issues such as mandates now from the federal government that you have to clean catch basins once a year, every catch basin. And in Agawam, for instance, we have about 5,000 catch <laughs> basins. And uh, we also have to sweep the streets twice a year um, to keep the debris from getting into the catch basins. The whole premise of this, this edict is because they want to stop the pollutants from getting into the rivers and streams because what people don't realize is all these catch basins, the drainage from stormwater, goes down underground into these pipes and runs to a, a, a either a stream or a brook or a river. Um, and there's contaminants in that if you don't keep things clean. And in Agua, we have 120 miles of piping underground. These things haven't been touched for 60, 80, 100 years. So they're all breaking down. And you don't see that because it's below ground, right. out of sight, out of mind. So we've got to now all of a sudden start repairing all these. Um, situations and assisting with the stormwater mandates and that's a very expensive venture. Um, in Agawam we've been very progressive with getting our streets and sidewalks done. That's been a focus and I'm sure everybody remembers the uh, Morgan Sullivan Bridge that connects Indeed West we do, yes. to Agawam yeah. by the Big E. That was an amazing project. Usually when you're dealing with a, a bridge of that magnitude, that's a pretty good sized bridge, a pretty busy intersection there. Usually there's problems, there's delays, there's, there's holdups, there's a uh, overruns, there's uh, expansion of, uh, of uh, different facilities. That bridge was finished 10 months to a year ahead of time, thanks to a lot of help from the governor's office with giving us uh, monies. They negotiated with Northern Construction, who was in charge of that project, and they expedited that by giving them 1.2 million uh, above and beyond the 26 million that was originally slated, and that allowed them to work weekends and nights to finish it sooner. And quite frankly, in, in the case of the construction of the bridge, the pandemic almost helped us yeah. because there's two schools in that, that area. So we didn't have the walk or the foot traffic from kids going to and from school. So that helped expedite that project. But that, that came under budget and it came under the time limit. It was 10 months ahead of time. So that went very smoothly. We had a big intersection in Feeding Hills um, up by uh, the Southwick line. Yep. That was a great project that helped safety and traffic flow. 
So we're really focused on a lot of uh, infrastructure, roads, sidewalks, and uh, we're moving forward with that and going to continue that to moving forward. Always those challenges. Tell me, what do you see as the differences between running a city and running the school department? And how about the similarities, too? Well, the similarities, uh, when, uh, when I retired, people were recruiting me to run for mayor, and they said, you have some of the skill set that it would take to be a mayor. And I said, how so? They said, well, you know, the uh, hiring and firing of large number of staff, uh, the budget, you're over 50% of the entire town budget. Um, and those types of skills you already have so that you could move over and it would be seamless. Well, it isn't seamless. Being a superintendent <laughs> of schools is one thing. Being a mayor, you have all those responsibilities. And as mayor in Aguam, as it is in many communities, you are also the chair of the school committee. So the school issues don't entirely go away either. So you still have some of those. And fire, police, DPW, streets, sidewalks, blighted properties, stormwater issues. It's a big, big, big job. And it is even bigger than I thought it was before I got into it. 24-7. Without a doubt. You know, that expression is overused, but it is 24-7. All right. We're going to take a break. Then when we come back, uh, we're going to talk about uh, the possibility of a new high school in Agron and lots more. Stay with me. Welcome back to Western Mass News Getting Answers. My guest this week is Agawam Mayor Bill Sapelli. Uh, Agawam is, is looking uh, to replace its 65-year-old high school. Where's that stand right now? Right now, we, were, uh, we applied actually... When I was the assistant superintendent back in 2005, Mary Tchaikovsky, then superintendent, applied to the MSB, the Mass School Building Authority, which is the uh, organization in the state that uh, funds the uh, new schools and renovations to schools. We applied back then, and we've applied several times over the last uh, 15 years or so. And this year we were invited in, and that's the term they use, you're invited in. So we are now in the eligibility um, stage of it. There are eight modulars that you go through. So it's like a three-year process. Mm -hmm. But we are, we open the door and we are in to that stage right now. And as you pointed out, our school was built in 1955. And right now, other than commerce, I think we're probably the oldest high school in the area because everybody around us has uh, received a new high school in the last 15 years or so, whether it's Hamden Wilbraham, or whether it's East Hampton or Long Meadow or right. West Springfield. They have all have high schools that are obviously fairly new, um, and that's what we're looking at. And the interesting thing with MSBA is when they come out to do their, their study, they look at all your buildings, and they tell you whether you need um, addition, a renovation, or a completely new building. And they don't just look at the high school, even though that's our focus. They look at all our facilities and see what we could do and what they could do to assist us with getting uh, the schools up to speed. Now, as far as the other schools are concerned, how, the, the overall state of the, of the schools in Angola? They're in good shape. Um, our high school, we've applied, as I told you, so, several years now and weren't invited in. And the reason it's a double-edged sword, because what Aguam did is we kept their buildings up to speed. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you get punished kind of uh, the good news, bad news is they'd come in and say, you know, your building is old, but you've kept it up and you've replaced things, so you're in pretty good shape. So we always got passed by. Um, but our schools are in terrific shape for the most part. We have eight schools. One school uh, building I think they're going to take a look at and probably uh, make some recommendations, strong recommendations on, is our early childhood center. Mm -hmm. I think that's something they're going to explain to us that, that, that needs uh, attention. The problem with the early childhood center is that uh, the state doesn't recognize early childhoods. They don't fund early childhood centers in and of themselves. If they're part of another building, sometimes they will do that. Um, so that's going to be a problem, but I'm sure they're going to point out that uh, we need to address that issue. The biggest issue, I think, with schools, too, yeah, like you said, the schools are structurally sound. They were well built to begin with. Correct. Uh, is the technology aspect of it and, and, and bringing that up to speed. And I'm guessing with these older schools, it's harder and harder. Oh, you're absolutely right. Uh, you take a look at the uh, um, science labs, okay? Back in 1955, it was a different era. We certainly didn't have computers. And uh, so the computer labs, we've done a lot of additions. Agom's had at least three, if not four additions to their high school since 1955. But uh, it still isn't the same as what the new structures they have today, the wiring, for instance. Right. Uh, that's one of the main things. 
Um, you look at a building like ours and you have boiler issues, you have electrical panel issues, you have wiring issues, you have ventilation issues. I mean, it, it's an old building. So uh, you can only do so much upgrades and replacements and then there comes a point where you do need to replace it. But as you point out, the bones are great. The yeah. structure um, is, is solid. Well, the other part too is, is the ventilation issues. We didn't, obviously you think about it, keeping the vents clean and everything else, but even brought even in, in further uh, into light with, with COVID and when the schools were shut down, uh, the problem you had at the library too with mold issues and things like that. You know, with these older systems, they're, they, they're not meant to, to really handle this stuff. Correct, and what we did do during the uh, pandemic is we did upgrade all of our systems in all the schools, but even the high school with regard to the uh, air quality, the ventilators, the air exchangers. We did a lot of upgrades, a lot of new equipment, uh, certainly uh, replaced filters and, and uh, did some thorough cleaning that we wouldn't have done otherwise if it wasn't for the pandemic. So we did get it up to speed where it was appropriate for the conditions, but you're absolutely right. Uh, those types of things are important too. All right, we're going to take another break. And when we come back, we're going to talk about some of the things the mayor hopes to accomplish in his next term. Welcome back to Western Mass News Getting Answers. I'm pleased to be joined this week by Agawam Mayor Bill Sapelli. Well, you were elected uh, in 2021, uh, about a month ago now, with 79% of the vote, and the city council recently voted to extend the mayoral term to four years. Do you see yourself running for re-election in 2023? Well, here's what happened. It's, it's, a, it's an interesting process to expand that from a two-year to a four-year term, and, and most communities are doing that now. Yeah. But what has to happen is the council has to agree to bring it to the legislature. And then the legislature has to pass it, and that only means it gets on the ballot, and then the voters have to pass it. So it's quite a process uh, to go through. But it is supposedly gonna be on the ballot for uh, next year, actually November of 22. And then the term would start, the four-year term would start in January of 23, as you pointed out. Now, it, it really does make sense. I mean, I've, I've talked to other mayors in other communities, because I think the majority of them now in Western Mass have gone to four-year terms, that you aren't running. You know, you're, you, you, you can act as mayor for a year, but then you've you got to get yourself in re-election mode. Uh, it, it gives you more time, doesn't it? Oh, it certainly does. I mean, let's face it, you have to start campaigning in, uh, you know, at least February of the year of the election that November. So you're in just over a year and you're campaigning again. And uh, you've got all these projects going on that you really need your attention. Um, right now, as you point out in Agawam, the, the high school, but when I first came in, I had the bridge project. Right. And that was a three year project. Now imagine if you had a turnover in the middle of it. I mean, things would have happened, it would have gotten done, but to have that continuity with the same person as the mayor, it would have been so much easier. And it pulls you away from the attention you give to some of those projects you have. In Agawam, we have several more intersections that we're looking at improving, whether it's the signaling, whether it's the uh, intersection itself and adding lanes. Those things take years. Uh, this high school project I just told you about, it's gonna take three or four years before we even get moving on getting a shovel in the ground. So a two year term is pretty difficult for a mayor's position, it really is. You've had good relations with the, with the city council too, I know. Agawam has, has always been an interesting place for politics, uh, especially with the council itself. But you and the council get along very well, and you've gotten a lot done. We get along extremely well. And you know the old expression, if two people always agree, one of them isn't thinking. We don't always agree. But we're respectful enough to realize, okay, walk away and, and bring up the next issue because, you know, it doesn't help to uh, just dwell on what didn't get passed or if you didn't get your way on this or that, whichever side you're on. No, we have a, a, a real great relationship with the school committee and the city council. We've got a lot accomplished and it's a very professional relationship and, and that's not always been the case. Right. But when you have that relationship and that respect for each other, you do accomplish an awful lot. Indeed. As you look ahead to uh, 2022 and, and, and the rest of your, your third term, uh, what are some of the things you hope to accomplish? Well, as I was pointing out before, one of the things we really have to do, start addressing are these stormwater issues. Right. We have a lot of areas of town where there's flooding because of the problem with drainage, because of pipes underground that are uh, not functioning properly, whether they, uh, they are blocked or whether they just disintegrated because of the age. We've got culverts. We've got... Uh, um, different situations that need to be dredged, need to be cleaned, need to be rebuilt. Um, 
there's a lot of work with, uh, with infrastructure relating to stormwater. There's also a lot of work with the intersections, as I said. There's still a couple more intersections. There's some unique intersections in town that we need to improve for safety purposes. Um, there's no end to the work you can do with sidewalks. Um, the fact that we're doing the new high school and we're in that process, um, that's a big, big, big job. Yeah. Um, that's going to be one of the main focuses for, for our community. Trying to keep our businesses strong. And right now, uh, tax rates are important. Mm -hmm. Agawam is one of uh, maybe six or eight communities that has a split tax rate. We have one for residential and one for commercial. Um, and the reason that happens, it happens usually in the larger communities, the cities, uh, Springfield, Hoyo, Chicopee, yeah. Westfield, Agawam, West Springfield have a split tax rate. Setting the tax rate is coming up uh, next, next month. All right. And uh, that's always a challenge because you want to balance um, the pressure you put on the residents and on the commercial. People don't realize the more commercial property you have, it expands the tax base, and you can keep the homeowner's taxes down by having more business in town. I hate to cut you off, but we're going to have to call it that. It's, uh, we're out of time. Wonderful. Th thank you for being with us. Have good holidays. Mayor Bill Sapelli of Agawam, thanks for watching. Have a great day.